want to share with you, yeah, and your family, your family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives.
a chance Because tomorrow You may not have this chance You may not have this opportunity To give God An awesome, mighty Magnificent, tremendous Praise Glory Come on, lift up the voices I can get to say Thank you Jesus Hallelujah Glory to you Instagram 
as well. Thank you. If you want to come into the location, we are located at 8, 9, 5, 7, Drive. Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. We normally have what? Our empowerment night. It is October 17th, 2022. We will not be having empowerment night because we will be on the road coming back from Fairfax, South Carolina. But every other Monday night, join us at 8 o'clock p.m. with our very own apostle, Shannon Dino, where he empowers us, talks to us, prays with us, and most of all, teach us the word of God. Listen, I want you to make sure you join me. Prophetess, now teach you. No. Join me every Tuesday and every Friday at 8 o'clock p.m. Where you're going to begin to hear the prophet sound of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. We are so excited because guess what? God is sending us abroad. We are an international ministry. We praise God because God has blessed us to be in a position to have three churches in Kenya where our pastors, Pastor Jackson and Pastor Maureen Ortino, who are the pastors over there, the pastors and founders, Hallelujah. One Touch Ministries has the opportunity to visit. We're, or, we're going to be ordaining an impartation, certifying, and doing some teachings. So we're excited because we're going to be a blessing to our Kenya churches. Three, one, two, three churches in Kenya. We praise God because not only are we going to Kenya, but we need your help. Not to pay for our tickets, not to help us get on the airplane, not to carry our bags, to be, to be a blessing to the families in Kenya. We've already done one set of food drives and goods, but we want to take it a step further. We were able to feed back in May. We were able to feed 250 families. Let's try it again, but this time we're not going to do 250. We're going to do 700 families because we want to be a blessing. And the way you can be a blessing is to give. We need 30 people that will be willing to sow $100. Make sure you go to our Giveify app where you can find the information for the Kenya Crusade. And make sure you give. We need everybody's support. God bless you. Oh, this is one thing I love to hear. Listen, the prophetic sound is going on the road. We're having a prophetic sound revival. We are going to have nightly services on Friday, November the 4th at 7.30 p.m. at Straight Gate Church. Hallelujah. On well, Emblem Avenue in Philadelphia, PA. Hallelujah. And then Saturday, hallelujah, we're going to have a day session at 12 o'clock. I'm going to talk about that day session in a little bit. But I want you to make sure you meet us that night, Saturday night, November 5th at 6 o'clock p.m. Hallelujah. As Spirit and in truth, deliverance ministry. That's in Wilmington North. I'm sorry, Wilmington, Delaware. Glory to God. Hallelujah. On Sunday, November 6th at 11 o'clock a.m., I want you to meet us at First Baptist Church of Riverside, where the pastor, hallelujah, our pastor, hallelujah, Pastor Theodore King and First Lady Beth. We praise God for our covering so that we can cover you. Now, going back to the day session on November 5th, we had drink camp. Praise God. God has allowed us to form drink camp. We need you to register. And registration, and guess what? It's for free. I don't know about you, but I always love free. Free.
free, free, free. So register now because you have lunch and lunch is also included and that's for free. So make sure you go ahead to our website and register at www.onetouchministries.net hallelujah slash dream care. I want you to be able to register because I need all my dreamers, all my people that can dream and want to dream to register. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, God has been good. So that was the announcement. The announcement. The announcement. The announcement. Hallelujah. And the announcements that we were given. Make sure you stay connected to One Touch Ministries. Glory to God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to switch gears. Oh. I hear the sound. That's a good sound, y'all. Turn to your neighbor, say your neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It's offering time. It's offering time. Woo! Come on, come on. It's ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. And clap. One Sunday, all I had was five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. And my cash. And I heard God say, give the five, because five is representing the favor that I put on your life. Favor. Somebody turn to their neighbor and say, neighbor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. favor. Come on, come on, come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, favor.
And he went up unto them into the ship. And the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. And the other scripture that I want to pull out here is Matthew chapter 14. I want to read verses 23 through 25. And when, he, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went unto the mountain uh, apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Say, in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. On today, I just want to briefly give you a message today entitled, Trapped Between My Doom and My Destiny. I feel like that I'm trapped between my doom and my destiny. So Father God, I pray, Lord, that right now in the matchless name of Jesus, that Father God, that you have increased and I decrease. For Father God, I know it's not about me, but it's all about you, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, that something will be said or done on today, oh God, to be able to help out your people to be able to know that, Father God, that they are walking into their destiny. And I thank you, Lord, for doing it. Now, Father God, may you be glorified, may we be edified, and may the devil be horrified today. I am talking about the message trapped between my doom and my destiny. Some of us have been uh, experiencing lately some things that we talked about last week. Feel like that we're alone. Feel like that we're lost. Feel like that something just ain't right. To, and right now, it feels like that you're right there in the middle of yourself. You're right there in the middle of some mess. You feel like that, oh my God, I really want to bail out of this. But something is telling you, hey Shannon, keep going on. Keep going forward. And so a lot of times what happens in our lives is that we are walking into the season. We're walking into the place of the unknown. It's really scary being out there in the place of the unknown. Um, there are certain things that me and my wife are about to embark in that's honestly in a place of the unknown. Neither one of us have ever been to Kenya, Africa. Uh, I've been out of the country before, but I was actually with some people that I actually knew that was in Bible college. And so right now, we're getting ready to go into an area of the unknown. I'm here to encourage you today that God is about to send you into an area of the unknown. And when you get into those areas of the unknown, sometimes it becomes a little scary. I know as right now, as we're preparing to go to Kenya, let me tell you something. This is just a little nerve wracking. Yes, because we don't know what to expect. We don't know, honestly, when it comes down to the people, we're saying that we're going to feed about 700 people. That's what we're expecting. Um, but how many, but it may not be that many people there, but guess what? That's all right because we are on an assignment from God. And sometimes when God gives you an assignment, he doesn't lay out every single thing in detail. The Bible tells us that we know in part and we prophesy in part. And sometimes we're just not going to have the full understanding of every single thing that we may be facing in our lives. And so right now, I'm here to encourage every single person on today to let you know, hey, listen, baby, I know that it may seem like that things not going your way. And I know it may seem like that, you know... Uh, Couple times uh, they're never going to stop, but I'm here to tell you to keep moving forward. Yes, come on. You can't look back. You can't go back to those things that so be easily beset you. The Bible says to come away from those things that so easily beset you. I like the way that my pastor used to say it. He said, uh, take the rearview mirror and break out the rearview mirror. 
Stop looking back. Stop looking back into those things that are behind you. Stop looking back to those things that hurt you. Stop looking back at those things that harmed you. On today, God is saying that he's propelling you into your destiny. You may feel like that you have been trapped between your doom and your destiny, your doom. On one hand, it seems like that uh, it's easy for me to go back to selling the weed. It's easy for me to go back and selling drugs. It's easy for me to go back to the streets and go, go, and go hijack and rob and do all manners of evil. But I know that God has a plan for me. In the book of Jeremiah, he says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. He got good things that's lined up for you. And so I'm here to encourage you today. If you feel like that you're trapped between going back to that woman that meant you no good, trapped going back to that man that meant you no good, trapped and going back to that child that uh, seems like they just want to cut you out every single time that they get a chance to. But let me tell you something, baby. Don't feel like that you're trapped. Don't feel like that you have to endure. Don't feel like that, that you just have to be there for them. God is saying to you today, my brothers and my sisters, that you don't have to feel like that you're trapped between your doom and your destiny. You don't have to feel like that you're going back to an area that you don't supposed to be in. God is calling you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. So don't you even think about going back to somewhere that God has called you out of. God might have you go back there and it may take you 18 years of life to get out of it. So I'm here to encourage you on today to don't stop, continue to move forward in the name of Jesus because God has some great things for you lined up for you. I know that you're in the area of the unknown right now, but I'm here to tell you some good things for you. God has some awesome things lined up for you. And I need you to believe it. And I need you to receive the awesomeness that God has for you. I know it may seem like that the troubles are coming your way. Trials may come your way. Your children seem like they've been uh, going crazy. And it seems like that your husband uh, don't want to be with you. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, baby, uh, say God got some good things for you. Uh, let the man leave you. Uh, let him walk out on you. Uh, because God said, I got something else better lined up for you. I feel like that I'm trapped between my doom and my destiny. It seems like that God is not hearing me. It seems like God has not. I've been praying and asking God and saying, God, what am I supposed to do next? God, what am I supposed to go next? God, is this where I'm supposed to be right now? I really don't know if this is the area that I'm supposed to be in. I don't know. I feel like that I'm not going anywhere. I feel like that the Lord, what is happening to me? And God said, just baby, just hold on for just a few, just a little while longer. Because I got some things that you don't even see that's lined up for you. I got some things right now that I'm lining up. I'm stacking up blessings. In the name of Jesus. He said, I'm stacking up uh, some blessings uh, that you don't even have room enough to receive it. Uh, and I need you right now just to take a few little moments here. Just to think back of your life uh, and where God has brought you from. Uh, and say, if it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side, uh, I don't know where I will be. Uh, oh, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you have brought me out of darkness. And I thank you, God, that you have taken me into the marvelous light. Father God, I know that I, I've gone through the storm and the rain. I've gone through sickness.
sickness and pain, and I've gone through family hurt, and I've gone through loved ones, and right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I feel like I'm trapped, I'm caged up, for whatever reason, I can't go left, for whatever reason, I can't go right, for whatever reason, I feel bound up, but right now, in the name of Jesus, God said, I know the plans, for you said the Lord, cleanse the peace and out of evil. He promised to give you joy, love, and happiness. And I'm here to encourage you on today that the Bible says that He will give you the joy of your salvation. All you got to do is ask, trust, believe in Him, depend on Him, and know that He going to work it out for you. I find somebody say neighbor. I know God is about to work it out for me. And if I know that he's about to work it out for me, then I know he's about to work it out for you. So somebody say work it out, work it out, work it out, God. Hallelujah. Father God, work it out in the name of Jesus. Now, in the story here, it says here that, the tw that they had just finished feeding the 5,000. And the Bible says that straight away, he constrained his disciples. And that word constrained means that he made the disciples uh, get into the ship. Uh, I can only imagine how this conversation went about. They probably said, now, Jesus, uh, we're going over on the other side. Uh, we don't want to leave you here, God. Uh, why don't you get on a boat with us? Uh, and Jesus said, no, I need you to go. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, I need you to go. See, you can't stay here right where I'm at. I need you to go. See, what you don't understand is that sometimes God makes you do some things that you don't want to do. God makes you go into some places that you don't want to go. God makes you go into an area, go into a job, go into a city that he said, go in the name of Jesus. You say, I don't know why I'm going into this city. I don't know why I'm going into this job. Why am I even fooling with Sister Susie? You already know Sister Susie ain't right anyway. But God is saying that I know the plans that I have for you. And I know the plans that I have for Sister Susie. So I have to make you go to the job. I have to make you go to the restaurant. I have to make you live in the hotel just for the time being. And God is saying, I'm doing some things in you. I'm stirring up some stuff in you that you didn't even know that you had. I'm covering you. Hand me your handkerchief, honey. Hand me your handkerchief really quick. He said, I'm covering you. I'm covering you when people don't see what's happening on you. He said, I'm covering you, my son and my daughter. I'm covering you. And every now and then I have to talk to you just a little bit in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of God. And God has said, I got you covered. But when I take this off your face, your face is going to shine like the new day sun. Because there's some things that I'm forcing you to do. I know sometimes I'm a gentleman, but I'm restraining you. I'm making you. I'm forcing you to go into these places. I'm forcing you to go into these people and tell these people that Jesus Christ, he is really Lord. I need for you to be the example. I need you to be the embodiment of Jesus Christ living here on earth. He said, I'm making you to do these things. Yes, God. 
I feel like I'm trying. The Bible says it straightway. He constrained his disciples to go into the ship and go on the other side before Bethesda. While he sent them, while he sent them away, and he went uh, away, he went to the mountain to pray. The Bible says that as he sent the disciples away, that he went to the mountains to pray. Let me tell you something prophetically here. You may feel like that you're trapped. You may feel like that you're all alone. You may feel like that, oh my God, uh, God has left me again. Then he go out praying somewhere. But God is saying, I'm out here praying for you. I'm out covering you. I'm above the storm. I'm above the storm watching over you to make sure that you are covered all the way around. And so the Bible says here, and strictly he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before the that Bethesda. And while they while he sent them away, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountains to pray. And when he was come, when the night time had came, the ship was in the midst of the sea. I want to explain something to you. The Bible says that it was in the middle of the sea. Right now, I'm in the middle of the stage. I'm in the midst of the sea. I want you guys to understand that as, as uh, how many steps it takes for me to get from this side of the stage and how many steps it takes for me to get to the other side of the stage. It doesn't matter. I'm still taking the same Steps. It doesn't matter. I'm in the midst of the sea, in the midst of a turmoil. I'm in the midst of the storm. Some of you may have been feeling like that you're in the midst of a bad situation. You're living in the midst of people that you don't want to live with. You're living in the midst. You're living in a crisis situation. But let me tell you something. Uh, in Japanese, in, in Chinese, the word crisis means opportunity. Yes, come on, come on. The word crisis means opportunity. So if you feel like that you're in the middle of a circumstance, that you're in the middle of a crisis, I'm here to challenge you and encourage you here on today that you know that you are in the midst of the greatest opportunity that you ever had in your life. Go ahead and take advantage of that opportunity. I know that we were in the midst of a pandemic, but let me tell you something. Right in the midst of a pandemic, me and my wife moved to Orlando, Florida. Yeah, come on, come on. We come took on. advantage of a crisis yeah. situation. Let me tell you something, in the midst of a crisis situation, we actually got a chance to travel. We've been to LA, we've been to some other cities, North Carolina, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And I was able to travel and go back and go see family for cheap. Listen, take advantage of crisis situation. But I know sometimes when you're in the middle of that sea and you're in the middle of that storm, it feels like that you rock it back and forth. I know that feeling of rocking back and forth and it seems like the storms are coming and it seems like the wind is blowing and it seems like the man how come we need to turn back around? We need to go back to where we came from. But God is saying on today that you cannot turn around. You got to continue to move forward in the name of Jesus. Listen, you can't stay right there. 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 The Bible says that when evening had come, the ship was in the midst of the sea. I know the enemy sometimes he comes to attack us at nighttime. He comes to that, that I'm telling you, it's something about that nighttime, something about that darkness, that the enemy gets a chance to come into your mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but he comes into that mind. He comes to attack you in your darkness. mind. It seems like that uh, when it comes nighttime. Because he's darkness. That's because he's in darkness. That's right, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he's in darkness. Yes. And, and so, watch this now. The Bible says, and when evil was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and, long, and he alone was on land. He alone land, land means that God, Jesus, was alone on the land. Because remember, he's out in the mountains, and he's praying. And watch this now. The Bible says, he alone was on land, and he saw them touring and roaring, for the wind was contrary to them. So in other words, he saw them rowing the boat. He saw them rowing the boat, but the wind 
was pushing up against them. The wind was pushing them, and it made it seem like it, and it made it harder for the disciples to row. It made it harder for them to go through the storm, and it was like I could just imagine. Oh my goodness, it'd be easier for us just to turn this boat around and just go back, but God is here to tell you today, don't go back. He saw, and I'm here to point out this really quick. Jesus sees you in your pain. Jesus sees you in your hurt. Jesus sees you in your affliction. God knows exactly what you're going through. But you have to have the faith and know that God is always with you. And he's always going to be there for you. He said his rod and his staff, it shall comfort you. In the name of so he saw them trying and roaring. Uh, the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, uh, he started walking towards them. And so late in the midnight hour, God started to walk towards them. I'm here to encourage you on today that late in the midnight hour that God is going to begin to turn your situation around. That God is going to start walking towards your situation. That God is going to start doing some things for you. Late in the midnight hour, the Bible, uh, Fred Hammond says, late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. You got to have faith and trust and know that whatever God has meant for you, that God has to work out. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. And I thank the Lord for doing great things in the midst of great people. Thank you, God, that you're working out situations. Thank you, God, that you're working out circumstances. Thank you, God, that you're walking towards my situation. Thank you, God, that you're coming towards me. And the Bible says this. The Bible says that Jesus put and passed by them. God said right now in the name of Jesus, he said that I would have passed by them because your faith is at a level. Go ahead, honey. Your faith is at a level that where seems like that you may need God to step in for you. But let me tell you something. Your faith that you're at right now, he said that you have to pay. I would have walked past you so you can find out that you got it. But since you went on here and called out my name, I'm going to go ahead and step in the boat with you. But just know that I'm walking towards your situation. I'm walking towards your circumstances. I'm walking towards you in the name of Jesus. So I'm here to tell you right now, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't resign. Don't walk out. For God, he's there with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It may seem like that God is not going to ever come to your rescue. But I'm here to tell you that God is coming to your rescue. It may be late in the midnight hour. It may be at 1 o'clock in the morning. It may be at 12 o'clock at night. But God said, I'm walking it out. I'm stepping out on the ocean for you. I'm stepping out. And I need you to step out. Step out on faith. Step out. Don't get tired. And don't get weary. I would have passed by you. Because you was at a faith level that I didn't need to step on the boat. But since you thought that I was a ghost, let me go ahead and step on in the boat with you to prove to you, to let you know that you're already You're already on the other side of the ship. You're already on the other side of the sea. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that as soon as they crossed the other side of the sea, that they were all, when he stepped on the boat, they were on the other side of the sea. So I'm here to encourage you on today that you just don't know. That you may feel like that you're trapped between your door. Come on, keep that going. Come on, give me up, 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 up. Come on, 13, 14. 
14, 15. Let's go. That's right. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, because we felt like and we had times that we felt like that we were trapped between our doom and our destiny. We felt like that we were to turn back around and go back to the past. But I'm here to tell you today, don't feel like that you're trapped. You're not trapped. Just keep rowing the boat. Keep pushing. I know it feels like that the wind is contrary. I know it feels like it's very hard for you to keep rowing that boat. But baby, keep rowing that boat. Come on. Come on, keep pushing. Come on, keep pushing. In the movie, Little Nemo, the fish because they were trapped in the net. Keep swimming down. And she said, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here to tell you. Just keep swimming. Keep on pushing. Don't resign and not walk out. Don't go in the white towel. Just keep going. For God, he is with you. He sees you in your affliction. He sees you in your circumstances. He sees you right where you are. I know that you don't like right where you are. But I'm here to tell you today to keep on pushing. Keep on going. Keep on moving. Don't stop until you get your blessing. Don't quit. Don't resign. Come on. You got to keep going. In the name of Jesus, just keep on going, baby. Don't let the naysayers, don't let them tell you otherwise. Just keep going. Keep pushing. Press for the mark of the price of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Just keep pushing. Just keep on swimming. Keep running. Keep going. I don't know why you feel like you're trapped, but I'm here to break you out. Come on, break those chains. Come on, break those chains. Break, break, break. Come on, break, break, break. Break those chains. Break those chains. The songwriter said, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. Hallelujah. Come on, we need to dance in this place. Come on, right now, in the name of Jesus, we need to dance in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, take the shackles off your feet so that you can dance. Come on, give him a dance. Give him a praise. Come on.
So now the breaking can come about in the name of Jesus.